Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 128 of ASP.NET video tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about absolute expiration, sliding expiration, and cache item priority parameters of the insert and add methods of cache object. In part 127 of the ASP.NET video tutorial, we discussed about different ways to cache application data. There are three ways we can either use direct assignment, insert method, or add method. Insert method has got several overloaded versions, so some of the parameters are optional, whereas add method has got no overload, so we need to supply values for each and every parameter. In this video, we'll be talking about, you know, absolute expiration, sliding expiration, and uh, cache item priority parameters of these two methods, insert and add. So, when we cache an item using insert or add methods, we can also specify how long we want that item to be cached. And basically, there are two ways to do that. We can either use absolute expiration or sliding expiration. So what's absolute expiration? It's a date time object that specifies when the data should be removed from cache. When we specify absolute expiration, the cached item will expire at that time irrespective of whether the cached item is accessed or not. So let's understand what we mean by this with an example. So here we're caching this data set using this key products data. So the next parameter is cache dependency for which we are passing null at the moment. We'll be talking about cache dependency in a later video session. The next parameter is, you know, absolute expiration parameter. Look at the data type. It's a date time object. So it's a date time object that we specify, uh, you know, basically you know, when this item is going to expire from cache. Okay, let's say for example, I want this item uh, to stay in cache only for 10 seconds, then I'm going to specify that using date time dot now, which is going to return the current date and time. To that, I want to add 10 seconds, meaning I want this item to be cached for the next 10 seconds. Okay, now since I am using absolute expiration here, I am specifying cache dot no sliding expiration for sliding expiration parameter. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. So we have this code in the button click event, okay? So that's when the item is going to be cached. So when I click this button, the item is retrieved from the database, cached, okay? So I click this again now, look at this, I got the rows from cache. I keep clicking it, I get it from cache as long as the item stays in cache. Now, every time you click this button, we are actually retrieving it from the cache. So irrespective of whether we are accessing that item from the cache or not, Okay, once we cache that item, it's going to stay in memory only for 10 seconds. And it doesn't really matter whether you access that item or not when it is cached. That's absolute expiration. But what's sliding expiration? So it's a time span object. First of all, there is a data type difference, absolute expiration. We use date time object. For sliding expiration, we use time span object. So a time span object that identifies how long the data should remain in the cache after the data was last accessed. So once you, you know, whatever is the time that you have last accessed it from cache, from that point on, how long do you want that items to stay in the cache? Okay, that's what is specified by sliding expiration. Okay, so let's use sliding expiration. So if I want to use sliding expiration, the first thing I have to do is I have to specify cache dot no absolute expiration for absolute expiration parameter and I specify sliding expiration using a time span object. So time span dot let's say I want to cache this for 10 seconds, I'm going to specify time span dot from seconds 10. So Let's close this now. Let me run this once again. So once I click the button, you know, get products, that's when this item will be cached. And from that point, it's going to stay in cache for the next 10 seconds. Now, let's say, for example, six seconds have elapsed. Now, if I click this button once again, from this point on, for the next 10 seconds, again, this item will be cached. So every time you access the item from the cache, from that point, it is going to be you know, retained in cache for 10 seconds. So that's sliding expiration. But whereas absolute, in absolute expiration case, it doesn't really matter whether you access that item from the cache or not. From the time you have cached it, it's going to stay in cache for that duration. That's absolute expiration. Okay. 
Now, another important point to keep in mind is uh, you can use any of these techniques. You can either use absolute expiration or sliding expiration. You cannot specify both of them at the same time. So what's going to happen if I specify both of them? We already have sliding expiration here. Let me go ahead and specify absolute expiration as well. So date time dot now dot add seconds. So here we're specifying both absolute expiration and sliding expiration. Now when I build the solution, look at this, build solution on the status bar, you can see build succeeded. So we don't get a compile time error or build error. But then when I actually run this application and then when I click that button, that's when I get an error. So we get a runtime error in case if you specify both absolute expiration and sliding expiration. Look at this. When I click this, I get a runtime e error stating absolute expiration must be daytime.max value or sliding expiration must be time span.0. Okay. So the next parameter that we'll discuss about is cache item priority. So what is this cache item priority? Now we know that if we want to control how long we want to cache an item, we can either use absolute expiration or sliding expiration. But that's only an indirect control that we have over the cached item. But keep in mind, any time the web server is running low on memory, and if it requires more memory, it may remove cached items that may not have expired. However, the order in which these items are removed from the cache is determined by cached items priority. And we specify cached items priority using cache priority enum. So if you look at this, um, this add method and insert method has got another parameter called cache item priority. Look at that. After sliding expiration, the next parameter is cache item priority. And if I right click on that enum and then say go to definition, you can actually see all the enum members. Cache item priority, it's an enum. So these are the values. And if you look at this low, below normal, normal, default, above normal, high, not removable. So obviously, this is the highest priority, not removable. And then followed by high, above normal, and then the rest of them. And you also have a clean uh, summary here what each um, priority means. But basically, let's say, for example, I have three uh, data sets that I'm caching. Let's say that's one, two, and three. Let's say, for example, here I am specifying this as not removable, and maybe this one as high, and this one as low, for example. So obviously, if you look at this one, there are, let's say, this is DS1 and DS2 and DS3. So we have three data sets. Let's say, for example, that we are caching with these priorities, okay, low, high, and not removable. Now, let's say the web server is running low on memory, but these cache items uh, time has not expired. They, okay, th they still have time to retain to be retained in cache. But then, however, at this point, the web server is running on low low on memory. So which item is is it going to remove fast? It's going to remove the item that has got the lowest priority, in this case, DS1, okay, because its priority is low. And after that, if the web server is okay with the memory, it's not going to remove both of these. But in case, even after removing this item, if still the memory is not sufficient for the web server to do its functions, it's going to remove further items. But then it will first remove, you know, between these two, it will decide which one has got high priority using this parameter. Obviously, not removable has got the highest one. So it removes uh, the data set that has got this one, you know, DS2 in this case. And then finally, even after that, if it's not sufficient, it's going to remove DS3. So basically, cache item priority enum is going to determine the relative importance of cached items. Okay, but then remember, it's only an indirect control that we have over cached items. Okay, so basically, we discussed about absolute expiration, sliding expiration, and cache item priority. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. If you want to receive email alerts when new videos are uploaded, please subscribe to my YouTube channel at the link that you can see here. If you like this video, please uh, you know, like the video by clicking on the button at the bottom of this video. That's all for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.